Good to see you all this afternoon. Uh, as Carlos Minson, I am at the University of Oklahoma, and today I'm really happy to present my ongoing work on the linkages between natural disasters and economic inequality. I should mention this caveat that this is very descriptive in nature, uh, the, the project. So for those of us who are really used to looking into individual level data, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. But I'm really hoping to get a lot of good feedback from you all and kind of work on this. Uh, I'm also thankful to you and you wider for funding this uh, proposal uh, earlier on. And I got some really good feedback uh, earlier this summer as well. So the motivation behind working on this project comes from this stylized fact that forest fires uh, are you know, ongoing phenomenon in a lot of countries. In fact, there's a, a study, a lot of studies actually indicate that fires affect an annual average of 19.8 million hectares of land uh, globally. And so uh, at a micro level, there has been an influx of studies that looks into what kind of adaptive actions economic agents undertake to mitigate the negative effects of these natural disasters. So in, in this study, I'm mostly focusing on the incidence of forest fires. And uh, it's an interesting avenue for me to work on this because rather than looking to individual level actions, I'm focused on cross-country level uh, measures. And that's where the measure of economic inequality that Carlos mentioned, which is coming from the weak database, comes in really handy to look into how are these natural disasters influencing different measures of economic inequality. So there are two primary objectives in the study. First, I'm interested in estimating the relationship between the intensity of forest fires and economic inequality. Uh, I'm able to take advantage of variation across countries over time, looking into satellite data on fire events, and I'll talk a little bit about that. In terms of measuring the intensity of fires, I'm exclusively using uh, two different indicators. One is the number of fire events reported in a given country during a given year. The other one is the use of fire radiative power, which is essentially capturing the amount of energy that gets released in a specific fire event. To measure inequality, I'm focused mostly on Gini coefficient. The paper looks into other measures of economic inequality too, but for this presentation, I'm mostly presenting results on Gini coefficient. And then I also break down the estimates across different subsamples, and hopefully that will have more policy implications as we think about what these estimates are really telling us. So where I'm uh, hoping to get more feedback on at this point on this project is pinning down the mechanisms. So I've kind of thought about you know, a few mechanisms uh, that I'm implementing in this project, but I'm not really finding a clear-cut analysis at that front. So uh, it would be good to get feedback on that front. So let me just give you a brief preview of the results. In a sense, I saw that Zini index in rural areas increases by roughly 13.72% and 22.02% for every additional unit increase in the number of fire events and uh, the fire radiative power. So to capture intensity, I'm looking into the measure of fire radiative power. I also break down the sample into different uh, groups and I find that this effect is prominent across upper middle income countries and those belonging to East Asia and Pacific region. In terms of the contribution, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's the first article to be doing this analysis on a global scale where I'm able to quantify the linkages between incidents of fires and economic inequality. Uh, there's an influx of literature, you know, there's a rich literature looking into how natural disasters influence our economic level outcomes at the individual level and hopefully this contributes to that rich literature. As I mentioned, most of the references that you see in the paper are looking into specific natural experiment setting and kind of focus on individual level outcomes, which is different from this study where I'm looking into cross-country comparison. So in terms of the data, there are two different sources of data I take advantage of. The first one is uh, satellite data on active fire incident locations, which is available from NASA's FROMS uh, database. Essentially, it has information on the longitude and latitude and when the actual fire happened, right? So there's information on the brightness of the fire, the temperature of the fire, the fire radiative power, did the fire happen in a given night or a daytime? And uh, I eventually aggregate these uh, fire events uh, at the country year level because the indicator that I'm interested in to measure economic inequality is available at the country year level, right? And that's where world income inequality database comes in, which has rich country level information on several different indicators. 
namely Gini index, uh, GDP, and all other relevant indicators. So uh, in terms of the research design, essentially it's a simple uh, specification that I'm using where I'm modeling economic inequality as a function of two different indicators of fire events. One is uh, the number of fire events reported in a given country during the given year, that's fire. And then FRP is the intensity of fire, right? Essentially looking into what's the average rate of radiant heat that gets produced by a given fire during the entire year. I augment the specification with country fix effects, uh, country year, uh, uh, you know, uh, quadratic annual time trades, as well as year fix effects. In different specifications, uh, in the paper, I also look into different other baseline indicators at the country level. I interact them with year indicators, and essentially the results that I present today are roughly similar in magnitude. So I'm just focused on this uh, baseline specification, but for uh, the, the paper includes other specifications as well that kind of takes advantage of using other baseline country level information. Uh, there are three caveats in terms of the methodology that I want to point out. One, um, in terms of the intensity of fire events, uh, fire radiative power is something that's been proposed by a lot of, uh, you know, uh, folks working in remote sensing literature. So that's there's an influx of paper using fire radiative power, and so that's where this uh, this paper follows the recent literature. Um, the, there are also some limitations associated with satellite data, right? So this satellite data is kind of um, looking into one by one kilometer pixel information. So the center of the pixel denotes where the fire happened. There might be cases where more than one fire event uh, may have happened, but maybe the satellite data doesn't capture that. In a sense, I'm aggregating them all at the country year level, but that's the caveat that I want to mention here. And uh, in terms of interpreting the estimates, right, there are these cross-country differences that, that we have to m be mindful of. So this is a little bit different from kind of, uh, you see a lot of studies looking into administrative data on income and all of that stuff. So this is something that I'm not really able to look into because every indicator is at the country level. So I start the analysis with some basic descriptive uh, graphs here. You can see coronal density plots on Zini index, GDP per capita, number of fires, uh, fire radiative power across countries of different types. I break it down by high income, upper middle income, lower middle income, and low income categories. And essentially, as we expect, there's uh, massive economic inequality in countries that do not belong to high income uh, categories here. You can also see that number of fire events is heterogeneous across uh, countries of different in income categories. Mostly, you can see that on an average, number of fires uh, tend to happen in countries that do not belong to a uh, high income category. Right? So this is just the descriptive analysis. There's a lot of geographical variation uh, in terms of the economic inequality as well as the, the, the stock of fire events. The darker the color, uh, the higher the value of Gini index. And so you can see that the blue uh, dots in the map are where we do not really have uh, information on, so that's, that's missing here. But the point is there's a lot of geographical variation both in economic inequality as well as uh, fire events. This is again looking into a global map of fire radiative power. You can see that uh, this is essentially log transform, so uh, there's some variation going on. The darker the color, the higher the intensity of fire events that I see from the satellite data. Before I kind of dive into the uh, kind of uh, the fixed effect specification, I also collapse data at the country level just to see what's the correlation between these indicators uh, uh, as far as economic is concerned, and kind of linking that with uh, number of fires as well as fire radio power. And you can clearly see that as number of fire events, uh, there's uh, an increase in economic inequality here. So. This is one of the key tables in the paper. And so what's uh, going on here is, you can see I have seven different specifications. So I start with the entire data on column one, and then uh, I also kind of focus on um, measures that are reported with high quality, yearly level, um, you know, per capita measure, rural and urban areas. And you can clearly see that column six is where I'm finding statistical significance in that as number of fires and fire radio power increases, there's a 13 and 20.02 percent is increase in economic inequality. However, when I look into the interaction term, right, as the number of fires increases, the uh, the the effect on Gini index uh, 
is, is negative, right? So this is, in some sense, uh, kind of, I interpret this as some story behind creative destruction, right? So there might be a lot of uh, different, uh, you know, risk mitigating mechanisms countries adopt. You can think about, you know, use of fire risk maps. For instance, Nepal and India came up with this fire alert missing, right? So the, the, these other additional channels that may actually play a role in kind of, uh, you know, uh, reducing economic inequality. But I'm not really able to empirically tease that out in the paper. These are, again, just based on some other studies that have looked into uh, this. I also break this down by uh, uh, income level categories between high, upper, middle, and lower, low, middle income. And essentially, the effect that we are finding on the previous table is being driven by countries in upper, middle income uh, categories, right? And I don't really see any statistical significance in column one and column three. But as you can see, that there's a statistical significance consistent with the previous table in column two. I also break it down by uh, different categories of income. So there's net income, net or gross income, gross income, consumption, and market income. And mostly, you can see that the effect is driven by net or gross income and, and consumption, right? And that's what you see in column two and column four. And when I break it down by different reasons, so we have to be a little bit careful with the reduction in sample size here. So you can see, um, you know, column six focused on Southeast that only has 65 observations. So I, I don't really want to make a lot out of what we see on column six. But uh, essentially, what we're finding here is between column two, column six, and column seven, fire and fire energy power is actually having uh, a positive effect on on Zeni index. And the same story behind the, the relationship on the interaction term is consistent uh, in, in, in these specific countries. And I think that's where uh, I'm kind of interested in figuring out what are the channels that are leading to this heterogeneous response across countries is what I really need to be thinking about. And before I wrap up, I ha only have a minute uh, remaining. So there are a couple of other things that I've done in the paper, which is rather than focusing on the contemporaneous effect, I've also looked into dynamic effect, right? So how long do these effects persist, right? And there's a lot of uh, micro-level studies that shows that these shocks may have a lasting effect. And I see that these effects here last between one and five years. And in terms of the mechanisms, I'm also interested in finding out why is it that we see uh, a change in economic inequality, right? Is it that years of schooling change significantly in response to these events? Is it that uh, labor share in agriculture goes down? And so when I look into those specific channels, I do not see any statistical significant effect at this point. So I don't really have a clear story on what's the mechanism that is actually driving these effects. And so that's, that's where uh, I am essentially with this paper. And so any questions or comments would be uh, really welcome. Thank you so much.